Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little bit different off the beaten path from what I've been putting out recently, but I thought it would be a fun one to do. It actually came as a suggestion from one of you that I make a video all about my parenting expectations versus reality as a new mom. And I thought that that was a really cool idea. And then I've also just been getting general questions about my son Teddy and how he is doing and milestones and updates on him, which I don't touch upon a ton on this channel. And so I thought that today it would be kind of interesting to combine those two concepts into one video. So talking about parenting expectations versus reality, but also sprinkling in updates regarding Teddy in general, like throughout. Teddy turned six months old yesterday, which blows my mind. And I thought that this would be a good opportunity to make this video because first of all, I love to look back on stuff like this and just see how things were in that present time. That's a huge reason why I make so many vlogs and things on my channel because for me, it's also just really fun to look back and see, you know, how we were living a year ago or pre-baby or, you know, right after the baby, you know, things change so, so much. I feel in like early years of marriage and having children. And so this is kind of like a cool, way to um, reflect on all of that and reminisce. So I thought it would be interesting at the six month mark to hear how I feel about being a first time mom, what's working for us, what's what not working for us, and basically like what we're doing right now as our routine. Um, and then I'm thinking if you guys like this video in another six months when he's turning one, I'll make another one that's similar to this where I reflect on the latter half of the year and then like maybe the first year as a whole so let me know down below at the end of this video if you enjoyed it and if you'd like to see kind of a follow-up down the road so i have a lot of expectations and realities to get through today um and i'm going to make this more it's like a talking head video so if you are you know cleaning up your house or in the middle of doing something or you just want to relax with your headphones in and grab a snack this is a good video to do just that um, and just listen to um, I also, before I get started, want to just throw out a disclaimer, and I feel like this is like an obvious disclaimer and doesn't really need to be said, but I'm going to say it anyway because this is the internet, and yeah, <laughs> like I just feel like I should say it as a heads up beforehand. Um, this video is solely about my parenting experience and my child only. I am not here giving advice to anybody. I want you to know that, that I'm not sitting here and I'm not gonna be like preaching advice to you as a new mom. I am not going to be looking for any advice from anyone else, so no unsolicited advice. I will tell you flat out that I'm extremely happy with how being a mom and parenting has gone so far and I really like how we're doing things. So this is not a video of me like throwing out a bunch of my problems and saying, hey, like leave all of your comments below. No, however, because everyone's parenting journey is different and because everyone's child is different, certain things work for some people that don't work for others. And so if you're watching this and I say something like, oh, this was my expectation, this was my reality, and you're like, whoa, I had a totally different experience than that. I invite you to comment down below your experience on that particular thing. And that's just because I think that if you are a first time mom or an expecting mom who's watching this video, I feel it's good to hear all of these perspectives and experiences in a way that doesn't put pressure on a new mom. Um, because I know from experience, like people coming at me, giving me a bunch of unsolicited advice is really uncomfortable and very overwhelming. But if I can read through a bunch of experiences and compare and contrast, and it kind of gives me a feel for how things could turn out. Um, I feel like it's a lot more reassuring, a lot more soothing and just easier um, than having a bunch of people coming at you like, do this, do that, uh, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen, you know, like, we don't want any of that here. So I'm gonna share my experiences, you guys share your experiences, and then hopefully that becomes very helpful to someone who's watching. So that is my little disclaimer. <laughs> Everyone is very, very different. I've learned with parenting and 
experiences are completely different. I have a friend, we have children very close in age and our parenting experiences, some things have been the same, but some things have been completely opposite of each other. And we're similar people, but our children sometimes are not very similar. So it really is subjective. Um, so I'm just, take all of this with a grain of salt. It's not meant to be advice. Um, it's not meant to be telling you to do anything specific. I just wanted to share with you guys and you guys were interested, so that's where we're at. <laughs> okay, I'm really gonna jump in now because there's a lot. So the very first expectation that I came up with was, oh, and I'm reading off my phone, so that's why I'm looking down. The newborn stage was going to feel never ending and scary and that I was constantly going to feel like I had no idea what I was doing. I just had this in my head that when I was in like my last trimester of pregnancy, like, oh my gosh, my life is about to shift dramatically and I'm going to feel completely discombobulated and thrown into something very, very scary. And we're gonna have this little human and it's just gonna be us here to deal with him and like have to keep him alive. <laughs> and so there was a lot of anxiety surrounding that. And in reality, the newborn stage absolutely flew by. The newborn stage is the first eight weeks and then they are considered an infant. He was so rapidly changing week to week, day to day, that the whole stage as a whole just felt extremely fast. Like I blinked and he was two months old and we were moving out of that stage. And I remember the immense relief I felt when I realized that we made it through that part because everyone says how that's like such a hard, part, especially for a first time parent. For me, I just felt really relieved to have gotten through it. And I thought to myself, that really wasn't that bad. I kind of naturally went into autopilot when I had him. I just kind of knew what to do. It was really weird. It was like that maternal instinct just instantly kicked in the second we got home. And I did not personally find that I had any problem kind of knowing what to do. So for me, yeah, that newborn stage, while it beforehand seemed like it was gonna be this scary, dark, lonely place. Ended up being extremely fun, extremely exciting, and it absolutely flew by and was over before I knew it. And we were moving into him being like three months old and doing different things. I thought I would be exhausted and unable to function with a newborn. I was dreading this because I love to sleep. <laughs> I value my sleep a lot. And I was very nervous that we were just gonna not have any sleep ever, ever. Um, and let me just say that I was told by a million different people before I had Teddy that I was gonna be exhausted. And they were like, get sleep now. And let me tell you, newborn tired and pregnancy tired are two very different things. And you might've heard other people say this. Pregnancy tired for me was debilitating to the point that like I had days where I could not function, especially in my third trimester, I was not sleeping. I was waking up five to six times a night on average to pee. And every single time I would wake up, I would take probably 30 to 45 minutes to fall back asleep, only to wake up again an hour later. And I was taking so long to fall asleep because I was not comfortable, I was so uncomfortable. And the second I would lay back down, Teddy would wake up, he would be moving around, he'd be kicking, he'd have the hiccups, that was a big one. I could not go to sleep if he had the hiccups, he'd have them for like 30 minutes straight. And this was every single night from the moment I was about 30 weeks to the end. And I went to 39 weeks in one day. So nine weeks of not sleeping. I was so tired all the time and frustrated, beyond frustrated, could not get comfortable. It was terrible. So then he was born and I thought, oh no, it's gonna be even worse now. And to be honest, the reality was that I slept much better because I could lay on my stomach, I could get comfortable. And also Brandon and I implemented something that literally saved us. And if I'm gonna recommend anything to you uh, in this video, like, like I said, I'm not trying to preach to people, um, but I would recommend this, solely this. And that was working in shifts. So when Teddy was about two weeks old, Brandon was going back to work and we had to come up with something because I had to be able to function during the day while he was at work and I had the baby and he had to be able to function during the day because he had work. 
And so we thought, okay, how are we going to do this where we're both guaranteed sleep? Because for the first two weeks, we were kind of like just both waking up at night and it was just kind of, we were both being woken up. We were both trying to figure him out. And it was, we were very tired during the day. We were all taking naps during the day. Obviously, once he goes back to work, that doesn't work. Like I have to be awake, he has to be awake. This doesn't work. So what we decided to do was the first half of the night. So we would go, at that point, we were going to bed around 10 o'clock with Teddy going to bed around 10, which seems late, but he was at the time as a newborn sleeping so much during the day that he didn't really have a bedtime yet. So he would just kind of go to bed when we went to bed. So around 10 o'clock, we'd put him down. And then from that point in the night until 3 a.m., it was my shift. So if he woke up, we were both sleeping, Brandon and I were both sleeping, but if Teddy woke up at any point in between those hours, I was responsible for getting up, feeding him, changing him, whatever he needed, cuddling him, anything, just to get him back to sleep. If it was after three o'clock, Brandon would get up because Brandon was getting up around four anyway to tend to our wood stove because it was the dead of winter. Um, and then he would head off to work around like 6.30. So he was up pretty consistently at that point. So he volunteered that second half and said, if it's after three, I'll get up with him. And so it worked out because Teddy would wake up around 12, 30, one o'clock. I would do that shift with him and then he'd go back to sleep and he'd wake up around 3, 3.30, 4 o'clock and Brandon would take him and feed him out in the living room and I would get that second half of the night guaranteed sleep. Brandon would get the first half of the night guaranteed sleep. So we were each getting a decent stretch. Like that's all we needed was a stretch, right? And this worked so beautifully. And so I was not anywhere near as tired with a newborn as I was pregnant because when I was pregnant, nobody could help me. There's nobody to take that exhaustion and help me. With the baby, at least, we could switch off. <laughs> but when he was living in my body, it would just me and him. We were on our own. I, I had to just deal with it. And so I can say for reality for me was that I slept better with a newborn than I did with him in my body. So that's just me. That's just me. I know it's not gonna be like that for everybody, but that is, what worked for us and the shifts, that is what saved us for sure. Next one was that I thought a routine would fall into place fairly quickly and that it would just be like, this would be the routine and this is it, right? Like rigid. And the reality actually was that it took probably the first two months solid to get any kind of resemblance of a routine. We would try to do the same thing every single day, but the reality was that it was just really hard at that point. And he was just too little to really fully grasp the routine concept. And so for our own sake, we kept a routine for ourselves so that we would be in that rhythm when he finally caught on to that. Um, but I would say, yeah, it took about two months to establish any sort of routine. And then even at that point, he was constantly changing and evolving and it was just trial and error all the time. So at about the point where he started to kind of pick up on routine, his napping schedule started to change. He was sleeping less during the day. His playtime style was changing. He was starting to be more interactive. Um, he was sleeping less during the day. He was eating at different times. Like every, every week was different. So it was really, really hard to just keep a routine. We tried our hardest to maintain it as much as we could, but it did take a while. It took longer than I wanted it to. As you all know, if you watch me regularly, I'm a very type A person and I love routine. And so it was such a big goal of mine to set one so early on. But in the end, I just kind of had to accept going with the flow for a while and doing whatever worked. And one thing that I ended up implementing was getting myself a laptop and I ended up working downstairs in the living room and we basically were like living out of our living room during that time that we were establishing the routine because it was just easier than trying to haul Teddy upstairs to his nursery and then trying to get him to sleep in the crib and then I'm going in my office and then he's waking up and I'm going back and forth and like it was just, I was trying too hard to force a rigid routine early on. And so we ended up just kind of being like, okay, let's just see what works. Let's just follow his cues. 
And then eventually he caught on to that routine, like I said, around two months, which I'm going to talk more to in just a second because it pertains to his sleeping. Um, but it just, it did not fall into place like I wanted it to as quickly, but that's okay because we are now on a really good routine that we maintain pretty well. And it was definitely worth being persistent at the beginning and really establishing it, even though he didn't really get it right away. So speaking of that, because we had such a persistent routine, this brings me into his sleeping routine. And the expectation was that it was going to take several months to get him sleeping through the night. I thought it was gonna be at least the first year before he would be consistently sleeping long, long stretches at night. I knew that there would be points where it would get better, but I did not expect to be getting like a full night's sleep early on at all. Um, the reality for us was that he started to sleep through at two and a half months old, which was wild to me. I don't think this is normal. It probably is not, this is not typical. Um, but he started sleeping through at two and a half months old and like that's the dead honest truth. Like I said before, he used to go to bed around 10 um, and then he would wake up around 12 and then again at 3.30. But right around the two month mark, he dropped his first wake up. So he stopped waking up around 12.30 and he was sleeping like 10 to 3.30 and then waking up. And he did that for a couple weeks. And then there was one night that he just kept sleeping and I woke up and kept checking him to make sure he was okay because I was so thrown off by the fact that he was still asleep. And I thought for sure that that was a fluke and then he kept doing it. And he just completely dropped all of his night feeds just out of nowhere. And I attribute it to the fact that right before this, we had upped his ounces during the day and his bottles. So he was getting more calories during the day that he could burn through at night and stay asleep. And also his napping had changed. So he was napping less during the day at that point. And so he was a little bit more tired at night. And then because of that napping shift as well, his bedtime gradually got earlier and earlier. So I had made it a goal that the bedtime for the summer was gonna be around eight o'clock. And we were worried about that because we thought, oh no, if we make it earlier, he's not gonna sleep all the way through. And he naturally did this. So it started, he was going to bed at 10 and then he started to be really tired around nine o'clock. And so we would put him down at nine. And then eventually he made his way to eight o'clock. And it was to the point where if we went past eight o'clock and we're trying to keep him awake, he would get wicked overtired and he would not go to sleep easy. But if we would just put him to bed as soon as he started showing he was tired, which was right around eight, golden, would sleep all night, had absolutely no problems. So he very naturally did that and made it very easy for me. And I know that this is probably like grinding some of your gears watching this, like oh, that's so unrealistic. I'm just telling you how it happened for us. And I am grateful every single day of my life for this because I know that this is not a super typical thing and it wildly exceeded my expectations as far as sleep goes. He definitely has nights where he wakes up. A new thing recently is that we think he's having nightmares. He's waking up, um, not fully waking up, he's asleep um, and screaming in his sleep and seemingly scared. Like he looks scared, this look on his face and we're having to kind of calm him down. But I would say 95% of the time he's sleeping from about eight to 5.30 on average. I thought I was going to follow the trends as a new mom. I have TikTok, I sit on TikTok, I listen to the other new moms, I listen to the seasoned moms, I hear about all their experiences and I see all the trends. And admittedly, some of the trends are pretty cool and you know, the aesthetics and all the stuff that's out there. Um, I thought I was gonna be that type of mom. I'm not. I am the type of mom that does what works and gets us through the day, set me happy, okay? I originally had said uh, no to screen time in general. Like I was not gonna do any screen time with him. Yeah, I do. He watches Hey Bear. He watches Bear in the Big Blue House. He watches Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. He's not old enough to understand really what's going on. He likes the musical parts of the shows. He dances like in his little um, activity center. I put it on in the morning for him usually when I'm doing some chores around the house. And then the rest of the day we try to do playtime. So I really try to do that balance. 
I just never thought I would be the mom that was okay with doing that, but I am, ha, <laughs> surprise. The other thing that I didn't think I would do was contact napping during the day. So like I thought, no, he's gonna sleep every single nap in his bassinet. There are days where he just wants to cuddle on me. He just wants to lay on me. And so I let him. And I don't think that that's really hurting anything. He sleeps so well just being cuddled and I can sit and relax for a minute. It teaches me to take a minute and just soak in being a mom and snuggling him while he's this little because he's not going to do that forever, right? Like eventually he's not going to want to lay on mom. And so I do contact napping if he is cranky or if I just feel he needs like an extra good nap and I sit and I watch my trash TV. And there are other things, it's just the, those two come to mind, but there are just a lot of things that I am a lot more lenient on than I anticipated and it's, it's just, it's what works for us. Do what works for you. Don't listen to what everybody else is doing. Don't listen to the trends. You know, as long as you're doing things within reason that are safe, it's fine. Like do what you need to do to get yourself through the day, to keep your child happy, to keep yourself happy, to keep yourself sane. Sometimes we just need Hay Bear to help us out, you know? And I don't think there's any shame in that. <laughs> I thought I was going to exclusively breast pump and I did end up exclusive breast pumping. <laughs> um, but I didn't start out that way. I actually started with breastfeeding when he was first born. And right after he was born, we were breastfeeding, but he wasn't taking to it as well as I wanted him to. And I was very paranoid because I didn't know how much he was realistically getting ounces wise. And he wasn't super teeny when he was born, but he did lose weight in the week after he was born. And I was just very nervous. And so within the first couple weeks of him being born, I switched over to pumping and we would occasionally breastfeed as like a comfort thing or like a top off as I would call it. After he'd have a bottle, we'd breastfeed a little bit. Just being able to see the ounces of breast milk in those bottles and knowing he's getting this much at a feeding, made me so much more calm and I was just too paranoid otherwise like I just could not do it and I know there are so many of you probably watching that have breastfed and you're like girl like it's fine your body knows what he needs but for me I just needed to see those ounces and know like this is how much he's getting and everything is good and so I do pump now and I will get to more about the feeding um, right after this, this is the next one. Um, but yeah, I do pump. I have two Spectra pumps. I have one in my living room, one in my bedroom so that I don't have to move it back and forth, especially at night. I do my last pump of the night in my bedroom. And then if we have like company or something, I can go in my room. I also am borrowing a LV Stride from a friend. So it's a uh, hands-free pump that I can wear around the house while I'm doing stuff and that's been really helpful so I don't mind pumping um, but that brings me to my next expectation which was that I would be able to only feed Teddy breast milk throughout the course of his first year that was the plan and for the first four months or so that is what we did actually it was three months because we hit four months and that's when I threw in the towel with just breast milk so what happened around four months was he hit this massive growth spurt and he was suddenly needing five ounce bottles, like four to five ounce bottles consistently. And I was not able to keep up. My pumping schedule, I pump like every two to three hours and I was not producing enough for that. I would have been having to pump around the clock, which at one point I was right before he hit four months. I remember it was just before Easter, I believe. And I was so tired and Brandon came in our room after um, putting Teddy down one night and I was sitting there pumping and I looked at him and I was like, I can't do this anymore. We need to supplement with formula. And so what we started doing was bottles that are half and half. So he gets, you know, half or three quarters of breast milk in a bottle and then he'll get the remainder of ounces in formula. And it took some trial and error to find a formula that worked for him. He has kind of a sensitive belly. So um, we ended up with Enfamil uh, Neuro Pro Gentiles, and he really likes that one. <laughs> so that's what we did. And uh, we, like I said, do partial breast milk, partial formula bottles. So I don't think he's ever had a full formula bottle ever, maybe once or twice, like, 
a while ago, but they're usually at least partial breast milk. So he's still getting the benefits of the breast milk, which is what's the most important to me is that he's getting like the nutrients, but also like antibodies and all the good stuff from my body that knows what his body needs. And so that's what we've been doing and I'm okay with it. At first I was pretty bummed out that I couldn't just do the breast milk, but I was so stressed <laughs> and I was pumping around the clock and it was just way too much. I was losing out on time with family and I was just, I felt like I was tethered to that pump. And so to just like let go and do the formula was great. And then after we switched over to doing that also, because he could consistently have like the four to five ounces that he needed, he started to grow really fast. Um, so I knew that I had made the right decision for me because it really helped my mental health as well. Like I, I needed to do it. So that's what we ended up doing for feeding. I thought Teddy was going to need a ton of clothes, especially as a newborn. We obviously got a ton at our shower and I, remember like folding everything and thinking like, oh, this is a lot, but like, he's probably gonna need more. And to be completely honest, the first at least four months of his life, he mostly lived in sleepers with like double zippers and feet and the little hand covers and just like the snuggly jammies. Like that is what he lived in. And we had a ton of them and we honestly like would buy more because we would just go through them so quickly. And he had cute little outfits here and there. He had matching sets, but I have discovered that I absolutely hate putting pants on him. They are so hard to get on. He's wiggly. He will like pull his little feet out as I'm trying to get him on. And it drives me crazy. Like I just don't like the pants. I feel like a lot of them too, the waistband is like tight on him. He doesn't like them. And so the footy pajamas are just so easy. And then obviously because it's summer now, um, we haven't recently been having warm weather, but when we do have warm weather, it's just easy to throw him in a onesie. We don't need the fancy outfits. They're adorable, don't get me wrong. I get sucked in sometimes when I see them in the stores. I'm like, oh, I just love that. But I would say most of the stuff he wears is not like a full blown outfit. And if I do put him in an outfit, I usually get like a photo in it. I just don't find the outfits practical, especially at this age. So as he gets older, I'm sure that that will change. But right now, He's still like chilling in sleepers a lot more and on occasion we do like the full outfit, but they also get stained. They get ruined so quickly. You're going through so many outfits a day, even at this age that he's at now at six months, he is blowing through outfits all the time drooling, having blowouts on occasion. Um, sometimes like he pees through. That happened like three times in a row one day. And I just was like, what the heck? Like he never would do that. And then suddenly it was like, we went through like three outfits in a day. He's getting into eating like purees now too. And so they're just getting everywhere to the point that I don't even like, I just put a diaper on him to eat because I'm like, you're gonna be covered in this food. So the clothes, as adorable as they are, not worth it in my opinion. And I was kind of surprised that I was okay with being like so basic about his clothes, but like in the end, it's the easiest and the least stressful, so. All right, last one. I thought there would be hard days and the reality is there are some hard days. <laughs> there are days where I have absolutely no motivation to follow the schedule. There are days where I cannot figure out why Teddy is fussy. And then there are days that have crazy highs, like that are just amazing. And we're following a schedule all day and Teddy's happy. And it's literally like night and day, like how different the days can be. And you can have a beautiful start to your week. And then the end of the week could be terrible or vice versa. It's really day to day. Learning to not be selfish, learning to put myself second, like all of that has been big and something that I've worked on and having to accept that there are going to be days where things don't go the way that I want them to as a very type A person. That was hard to do, but I'm still learning about myself. I'm learning about my son. I'm learning about my relationship with my husband with being new parents. We're still learning. It's only been six months, but I feel we are coming out of it a little bit where the days, there are a lot more good days than bad now. Teddy is a lot happier now than he used to be. He's out of his like reflux stage. He had a really gassy stage where it was terrible. <laughs> we just have better days in general, I would say. He's a happier baby now as he's growing. And so there is a light at the end of the tunnel. The bad days are still there on occasion, but the good outweigh them so much. 
like unbelievable amounts. While it was exactly what I was imagining at times, it's okay. Cause there's still good, good days as well. So that's it. That's the update. And that's my expectations versus reality. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I tried to touch upon all the kind of areas of parenting so far that I've dealt with. I know that there's probably more that I'll think of after this, but maybe I will save some of that for 12 months and see how I feel at that point at the one year mark. It's crazy to me we're already halfway. I'm gonna have like a one year old in, in six short months. Like th these six months absolutely flew by. I can only imagine the next six. Maybe easier, may not be easier, who knows? I'm gonna have a mobile child soon. He's gonna be crawling. That could definitely be harder. <laughs> so anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you all have enjoyed. Once again, if you had a different experience than me, that's okay. Leave your experience down below in a way that's gonna be informative to someone who might wanna know different perspectives. And thank you all so much for sticking around, hanging out with me on my channel and checking in with me and always asking, you know, how, how are things as a parent? You know, it's not a parenting channel. It's still not gonna be a parenting channel, but like, it's nice to know that my subscribers are interested in that aspect of my life when that's never been like the subject matter that they come here for. So it's awesome. Thank you all so much for your support. And I am going to be doing some more talking head videos. I actually have one that I wanna film about the baby items that we really like and the ones that we don't like. And then I also wanna film one where I react to my hospital bag video and what I used and didn't use at the hospital. I think I'm gonna do that one later in the year, closer to when I made the first one. Upcoming videos are gonna be some vlogs, hopefully a garden update. I don't have enough to do one at the moment, um, but there will be summer gardening updates coming up. I have a few more things on the docket as well. So thank you all again so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like homemaking, I guess if you like parenting stuff, if you like lifestyle content in general, definitely subscribe, click the thumbs up if you liked the video and the little bell to be notified when I upload, if I upload. It's, it's inconsistent, but I do, I try. <laughs> I will see you all in the next one.